This presentation is all about condition scoring. Excess fat can increase injury risk to joints and related structures. Fat can accumulate around muscles to impede their action, to create a clumsy lethargic gait, and as a result, unnecessary strain is placed on the individual's cardiovascular system. Reducing time to fatigue, and making the attainment of optimal posture much more elusive. It's uncomfortable for the individual being made to work under such conditions and reduces their motivation for work. It's no coincidence that the most successful competing combinations tend to be the fittest horses carrying the lightest loads for their weight. Heavy riders place more strain on the horse's back and body compared with lighter riders. Movement and sports performance training is greatly inhibited by excess weight and the saddle will increase compression to the underlying tissues and blood flow will be inhibited. Saddles are just not designed for heavy riders so they are unlikely to fit them well. They will find it very difficult to achieve optimal alignment and if the heavy rider's balance is also poor, coupled with saddle fit issues, this will impact on the horse's back function and posture. So for example, if we take a look at this rider, we can see the alignment is not ideal and that she is sitting on the back of the saddle. Her weight is also extending over the front of the saddle and it's questionable whether the flocking is substantial enough to protect the horse from the compression of the tree. When the horse is underweight, and this usually means that it's also underdeveloped, it reduces potential for weight carrying. They're at a distinct disadvantage, even with a good horse to rider weight ratio. Being underweight and poorly nourished will have the same outcome. Both overweight and underweight horses can have the same management issues of poor nourishment affecting performance. And for example, the overweight horse may be on a starvation diet to address their obesity and could be feeling too hungry to work. And the underweight horse may be anxious and expending more of their energy to maintain life with less nutrients allocated to the body for performance. Both are technically malnourished. And similarly, using exercise to reduce weight is dependent on providing enough energy to initiate activity. Let's explore condition scoring now. In the equine, fat tends to be deposited more palpably through the top line and across the ribs and shoulders. Obese horses cannot carry heavier weight riders. They are not weight carriers. They already have their own excess weight, placing risk on their joints. Fat accumulates in various regions of the body, mainly the top line, and can vary in coverage from region to region. And what that means is that a horse may be light through the ribs, but still have a crest. Coverage changes seasonally and with conditioning and rest programs. And those changes impact greatly on saddle fit. 
An evaluation would involve palpating and noting the presence of fat along the crest of the neck, the withers, back, lumbar, gluteal, shoulder and rib regions, taking care to give each region an individual score. To arrive at an overall condition score, each number would be totaled and an average of those numbers calculated. Originally developed by Henneker et al. 1983 and based on minimal body fat levels for successful reproductive performance in mares, horses are condition scored from zero to nine. Zero being extremely emaciated and nine being extremely fat. And using a generic normative table for signs of excess fat throughout the body. But you do need to be familiar with your horse breeds so that you can have a good idea of what to expect for the breed and conditioning level as fit horses will be more lean than unfit horses. So this system does not deal with muscle development. A simpler system is to grade on a score of zero to five with a score of three being the ideal for an individual. And a good place to start if you are unfamiliar with condition scoring is to first view the contours of the pelvis as that is the easiest region to be clear about what you see. So we have three and this is the same horse three two one and zero four where a channel begins to emerge and five a substantial channel above the sacrum Calculate how much more concave or convex this region is to obtain a score either side of three. Scores can be arrived at in increments of 0.5. Obtain further scores from the neck, back, caudal scapula, ribs, allocating a score for each region. Condition scoring is a good starting point for sedentary horses or those in very light work, but a knowledge of muscle development and training levels is required for an individualized assessment of the true condition of non-sedentary types. And this will be covered in a later presentation. So let's return to our image of the horse inside profile. The crest requires very careful monitoring. And in particular, the degree of firmness is important for the monitoring of risk for laminitis and timely veterinary involvement. It's normal for stallions to have a cresty neck compared with mares in the same condition. And in the back region, careful palpation of the saddle region in overweight horses can reveal the presence of atrophy. Just because a horse is carrying fat, it doesn't mean that they do not have muscle atrophy beneath it, especially in this region. Fat pads can develop on either side of the top of the tail region. And the ribs. And the ribs of a horse in very light or no work should be palpable, but not visible in the horse with its summer coat on, with exception of the last two ribs or three being visible. Coat thickness can disguise condition. And winter can bring on loss of condition, therefore regular hands-on monitoring through the coat is essential. In the absence of access to a weighbridge, this system should be used in conjunction with a weight tape around here as an objective means of monitoring any change on a regular basis. Let's have a look at some examples. 
the first horse would score 0 0.5 to 1 as there is some slight covering across the ribs and you can see the last two to three ribs are more prominent compared with uh, the cranial ribs so there is some covering on this horse also across the gluteal region it's less than generous but there is some covering in the second image the neck is cresty and a channel is forming in the sacral region and this one I'd give a four to the horse is in light to moderate work and there would be a risk of strain if changes to the diet or exercise were not made sooner rather than later the third horse is in fit condition although I'd prefer to see more cover through the top line but this depends on the work the horse is doing and I'd give this 2.5 but would not be looking to alter the feeding program mid-season if the horse is competing and performing as expected the reason I'd make it 2.5 is that there are rather a lot of ribs showing we're so used to seeing overweight horses in the UK that it's too easy to condemn the leaner ones. And the fourth horse has comparable flesh cover to the third, but generally poor and not showing signs of being in regular work because of weakness of the posture. I'd score the 2.5 for this one as for the last one as there is some evidence of prominent ribs and hamstrings but I would be investigating why the horse was not looking at its best. The fifth horse at first glance could score a 3.5 for its soft condition so compare this with this but the horse is young and new to work and I would expect this horse to lose weight naturally as the work program progresses. I wouldn't begin to necessarily cut this horse's food because I would still want it to have energy to be able to work. So you can see that you have to look at the bigger picture than just palpation results and consider the management, environment, and time of year and whether or not the horse was likely to increase or drop weight without changes to feed and condition scoring is best carried out by a veterinarian who will simultaneously provide a health check and gait assessment as well as advice on how to commence making and monitoring changes if any are needed and some breeds can conceal the true extent of their obesity levels on the expectation that they are cobs or draft types others such as thoroughbreds can appear simultaneously underweight uh, when they are in fact in optimal fitness condition as in the third example it's thus challenging for most horse owners to formulate a realistic healthy target weight for their horses and it's even more challenging to select a diet and management program to achieve the healthy target weight. Harder still is to balance that program with optimization of energy levels and the physical as well as the psychological comfort in that horse. The greatest threat to making any change in state of health is that one body system such as the digestive system could be unintentionally compromised for the benefit of the other and this is precisely why full input from the horse's veterinarian is required let's now take a look at how a rider might be guided about their weight and this is a simplistic formula whereby weight is divided by height height squared and a score obtained for comparison with normative data and here's the normative chart taking a look at the chart you will see that the green zone is ideal 
and that scores of between 19 and 24 would be a good target weight for most individuals. Yellow zone riders, which are in the overweight zone, would need closer attention since for this group their horses may be bordering on being too light to carry them, especially if the rider has increased their weight since acquiring the horse or if the saddle is becoming increasingly less suitable for them, i.e. it doesn't fit the rider. Riders in the orange and red zones are likely to, to be putting their horses at risk. You will note that it is possible for individuals to arrive at the same score regardless of their weight and height. When evaluating the horse, saddle and rider as a combination, it should be possible to make a considered judgment about the horse rider weight ratio, enough to explain why this requires the rider to work towards making changes if they're required. We don't yet have scientifically proven guidelines as to safe limits to what this ratio should be, and it is dependent on age, fitness levels, dynamic posture, degree of asymmetry, and surfaces in the main, surfaces that are deep are much more strenuous to work on. To assume a starting point of around 10% rider to horse weight is likely to be a reasonable place to start as the saddle would need to be added onto that equation. And this estimate would need to be confirmed by a veterinarian in individual cases. A healthy horse rider weight ratio is absolutely fundamental to equine well-being. In the next presentation, we will explore the tissue components of movement.